This is the next Bite of Life podcast, the place to be to hear personal stories from expats, digital nomads, and everybody else taking their next bite of life. Welcome to another episode of the next Bite of Life podcast. My name is Kem Kem. Today, I thought I'd update you on what is happening in Valencia, as well as some other provinces in Spain. It seems like the news change every so often. And just a couple of weeks ago, I think, or two or three weeks ago, I had made a podcast about the state of affairs then. And it seemed like we were tired of the coronavirus and we were tired of taking precautions. And a lot of people felt the same way. But as, the, as, as everybody knows by now, the virus did not agree with us and uh, is making a second comeback uh, in a second wave for the, the, the whole country of Spain. And the, number, the numbers are getting worse as the days go by. I am more convinced than ever that Valencia is going to become collateral damage in the showdown. And I'll tell you why I think so. I know the decision makers have a really tough time trying to figure out what is right for the country as a whole because this is unprecedented and it's not like they have uh, a ball uh, to look through. You know, there's no fortune telling ball to look through. So they're just making decisions as they see fit. And the only good thing, at least, they seem to be listening to the professionals and the medical experts, experts, as opposed to just taking it by the seat of their pants and making decisions. It's starting to feel like I'm losing like a, you know, the sense of time because we seem to be in this foggy haze and existence. And, you know, the cases in Valencia, we have right now, as of this morning, we have 61,600 cases of total infections with 2,677 over the last 24 hours. Now, just a few days ago when I was thinking about making this podcast, it was at 54,000, the total infected. And, you know, when you think about the numbers, they're very concerning, but when you think about what's happening in Madrid and Barcelona, which seem to have like almost six times the number that we have. And when you look at the index that they use to measure the severity of infection, which is like 200 infected per 100,000 inhabitants, Valencia is actually below that. But we seem to be wrapped up in everything. And I think Madrid and Barcelona, because of their size and their power, will not, you know, just agree to be in lockdown like we were a few months ago. I think it's going to be a matter of like, we'll do it only if the whole country does it, which seems to be okay. I mean, like, I can't complain about that because I think that is probably the best way to stamp it out. You can't like put band-aids on little things that are erupting all over the place. You need to make a firm decision for the whole country as a whole and maybe deal with that. I had said in that last previous podcast about how I didn't think it was a good thing to let the tourists in, especially from countries that were lax with their rules and they didn't have mask wearing and all that stuff. We were forced to to have the borders open before it was ready. And I think the government needs to own up to that, but they won't. So we'll just have to just suck it up and go along. We'll have to suffer all over again and probably go into a state of lockdown because of their decision. And I just don't want this to become like what happens again and again when they put profit over the health of the citizens. Right now in Barcelona, for instance, all the bars and restaurants have been closed and only um, delivery or takeout is available. 
now the cinemas are like you know half the numbers and you know in madrid like you're confined to your own barrio you can't really go outside of your little, little neighborhood and so doing that it's just what i call the band-aid effect they need to be like a solid thing because otherwise somebody's always going to get through and it's always going to be a problem and we can't keep doing this. Maybe it's time for everybody to lock down just like France has done uh, as of yesterday where everything is back down to lockdown. I think they need to make that decision and yeah, it may not be a popular one and we may not like it, but I think that's the only, I think that's the only way to bring things down. But I wish they would say like, you know what, we're sorry, we kind of failed the first time. We shouldn't have opened it too early. We need to like suck it up and do it again. Right now in Valencia, this is what we have. We have a curfew from midnight to 6 a.m. This was originally supposed to last for two weeks, but it has been extended to six months. And so it will not end until May, 2021. Gatherings of more than six people are not allowed unless they live together. Gardens and other open air spaces are to be closed at 10, p 10 p.m. and open again at 8 a.m. No alcohol can be sold between those times unless you're at a hotel. And the residents have been advised not to socialize unless it's essential. And yesterday, Valencia joined a bunch of regions that were closing off their borders. Originally, it had been thought that Madrid would close theirs and they were dragging their feet and not doing it because the numbers are so high. All the neighboring provinces decided to close theirs and not allow people from Madrid to come into their province. So Andalusia... Um, the Basque country, there's a few um, that have already gone that route and Valencia has now joined them and our borders are closed to outsiders as of yesterday. Within the region, you can still travel back and forth. Like I could go to Alicante if I wanted to, but I have a feeling that come, you know, coming soon, that will not be allowed as well. Now, all of these above points are in addition to the compulsory mask wearing that we already do and the social distancing measures and you know with the numbers that we have in valencia like i said before not being as high and being under the index that they are using to measure the severity we should not have been included but we're collateral damage in that we just have to go along with the flow and once again it sucks but we have to do it in Valencia, you see the people have gone, you know, they've been going out more that I've noticed the streets are much fuller. The restaurants that made it through the quarantine that are open again, I've seen, I'm seeing a lot more people, especially outside on the terraces. It's not quite up to the level it was before, of course, because you're taking away the number of tourists that have been here because a lot of countries have, you know, shut Spain out of their of their approved list of countries to visit. Of course, now it's too late. We we should have done what they did from the beginning. Um, so seeing like the restaurants full is really, it's gratifying because I think the people are going out as a show of support to the restaurants that made it through. Another reason I think the restaurants are full again, at least, you know, that I see apart from showing support for the people that own the restaurants and stuff. I think it's also because a lot of them have chosen not to increase the prices as much. They have like lowered the prices in a lot of places that I saw the happy hour now being like, you know, a pint of beer for like one euro, whereas it used to be 150, you know, the menu idea going down from like 10 euros or eight euros to like six or seven. So they're going more for volume, and I think people see that. And so they get higher numbers, which I've always thought that was a great way to operate anyway, because you do a lot of volume and you have more people coming in, then raise the prices and see less people coming in. The ones that um, have raised their prices, obviously, will probably suffer the consequences. 
I know like my favorite Mexican restaurant, I stopped going when I went back recently and saw that they had raised the <laughs> the um, margarita prices by like two euros a glass. And it's not even, I was always, I was already complaining about the six euros, but I was willing to pay it. But eight euros for like a martini glass, literally a martini glass size of frozen margarita because nobody makes fresh in Valencia made me really upset. And so I thought I wasn't going to go there. And then afterwards, I understood why every time I passed by, there were not a lot of people because I think they raised their prices too much. All I can say is that hopefully they'll they'll realize this and be like everybody else and realize that it's important to get the people back in and enjoying themselves. Now, the other reason, of course, she, you know, could be that People are just out there enjoying the freedom that they have right now. They're, you know, meeting up with friends and enjoying wine and drink and just watching the world go by because they know that it might be for a limited time. And they feel the same way that I do that, um, you know, the lockdown, the inevitable lockdown, like in France, is going to come. And so they're using the time to really get their fill of things, I guess. So. <laughs> So um, it's been good, though, to see people out after so many months of having it empty. It's nice to have everybody. And the weather has been cooperating very nicely. It's sunny and not too cold, so it's perfect for sitting outside. The one thing that, you know, bothers me at least a little bit is that the neighbors are encouraged to snitch on each other if they see that people are breaking the curfew or having overnight parties, because uh, the botellon is a very big thing in Spain. This is where the the kids and the younger kids will go out and buy, you know, big, huge bottles of alcohol and beer and whatever, and drink it in open spaces like at the park and, you know, on the park benches and the streets, you know, and they gather and have fun. And instead of going out to clubs or whatever, which costs more money. So now that they can't do it, which was, that was the reason originally why they had instituted the curfew. But now that they can't do that anymore, obviously they're moving it in-house. And there is a little bit cause for concern because, you know, the infection rates, of course, can go up. But I don't like the idea of them encouraging people to kind of start snitching on each other. It seems to be like... uh, a slippery slope of sorts that I don't think should be encouraged. I think, you know, stamping down, I think, at least this is what I think, they should just make a decision for the whole country. And if everybody was just willing to do the time for another two weeks, a month, or whatever it takes to clamp this down and then not open the borders for a while, kind of take a page from Australia and see how they've done it and how they've been successful at it. Maybe we might be more successful with this whole thing and be able to lock it down and actually have it under control. We don't know what the virus has in store for us. All we know is that we've got to protect ourselves. We've got to protect others and try as much as possible to social distance, to wear a mask, to, you know, to limit the the gatherings, the parties, you know, because obviously when you drink, your inhibitions are a little bit uh, lost and so you can make rash decisions. But this will be a way to like relax even and enjoy, enjoy life. I know people are very anxious to travel. I mean, sometimes I feel like I feel guilty almost because I haven't traveled in a while, nor do I plan on traveling. But I think once I came to the realization that this isn't a joke, this is like a matter of life. This is a matter of saving lives, yours as well as others. It doesn't make any sense to be going out and traveling so much unless you're able to social distance. I know like um, sales of RVs, for instance, have gone up. And I think that's a fantastic way to see the world and see the surroundings if you're still 
wanting to travel. It's a way for you to protect yourself and to protect others because you have all this wide open spaces and it might help or, you know, it certainly couldn't hurt. So if you feel the urge, that may be what to do. Travel around your own neighborhood and your own state and your own province because it's a fast moving uh, goalpost. They're constantly changing. I mean, from when I thought about this podcast to doing it, the borders were still open. Everything is changing rapidly. So you don't want to get into a situation where you're stuck in another um, time zone or in another country, in another city, and you can't get back to to where you're um, originally from. This is going to cost you a whole lot of money because now you have to pay for where you're at and also where you were before, whether it's in the form of a mortgage or in the form of a lease or something. I know you want to travel, but it might be time to take one for the team, so to speak, and just sit down, enjoy, and take, you know, take the time to, to smell the roses. You know, a lot of, uh, I know like in Madrid, for instance, they're also encouraging people to start working from home again. And if this goes nationwide, yeah, it's going to be hard, but we've done it before and we can do it again. There's no reason to like, you know, raid the supermarket store, the, the shelves, because, you know, the trucks come every night and they replace everything. So there's no reason to hoard, you know, think of yourself and think of your neighbors as well. And I think we can all get th- through this together if we just are ready to do our part in making sure that life goes on, not just for us, but for everybody else coming behind us and it'll certainly give us practice for the next pandemic that's coming because I don't want to, you know, I don't want anybody to kid themselves and think that once we're through this, this is all there is. I think from now on, this is something we have to get used to and it's not going to be pretty. I mean, when they said the new normal, they really meant the new normal. And the faster you can adjust to it and know that this is here to stay for a very long time, the better you'll be, whether it's physically wise, mental, especially mentally wise. I know a lot of people are going into the, um, into depression because of the, the virus. It's caused a lot of, uh, anger and, you know, reach out and talk to somebody about it keep what you do, what we did before when the lockdown was here, stay in touch with your friends via Zoom or any other online thing. Go on Facebook and meet with your friends, Google chat, whatever it is, but don't lock yourself away. Just know that you're not alone in this fight and we're all in it together and we will get through this. So whether they call it a state of alarm a new lockdown, a new thing, just, you know, maybe just have it in your mind and call it what it is, which is going to be a strict new lockdown for everyone. And so I hope that you will find peace in that and you'll be able to, to go on, you know? So anyway, there's my spiel for this week. And I want to thank you again for listening to the podcast. And I would like to say, if you're enjoying what you hear, whether it's about the update in Spain or the stories of other expats everywhere else, please make sure you listen to the podcast and subscribe. I have, you know, I, I have the show notes on the next Bite of Life podcast, as you know, so you can check that out as well. If you have anything that you would like me to discuss that I haven't mentioned, make sure to get in touch and I will try as much as possible to find out and uh, and do a podcast on it. If you're interested in moving to Spain, you can definitely find out about my new Spain course, which shows you 
everything that you will be expecting if you move to Spain and how to adjust to life and the kind of weird things that you might not know. It talks you into what you need to do to move from the U.S. or anywhere because, you know, the rec the prerequisites are the same. So you can find out any of the information. I have the course on Thinkific and it's called Expat in Spain course. Or you can check out the website expatinvalencia.com and you'll find the links there as well as articles to what's happening in Valencia and everything else. So once again, thank you for joining me on this podcast episode. Please stay safe and healthy and I'll talk to you. Oh, well, I will see you or talk to you, chat with you on the next episode of the Next Bite of Life podcast. Have a good week. Thank you. Bye.